Well, there is no question that the president of Argentina, Javier Malay, has taken the world by storm with his chainsaw theatrics. Nick, were you nervous when Malay stepped up to the stage at the World Economic Forum's Davos conference that he might fold into the globalist crowd like the rest of our conservative leaders? Well, that was always a risk, Alexandra. I mean, uh, so many of the leaders, when they get there, just seem to be sort of infected with this vibe. But uh, he stuck to his guns. But he left behind a country, of course, which has 40% of its population living in poverty, 40%. And they're facing an inflation rate, for example, just one of the economic variables, of something like 200%. I mean, these are the sort of these are the sort of statistics that we just can't even comprehend. So while it's easy to sort of make commentary about Javier, he is dealing with very very serious issues, and he's got to come up with a way to improve the lives for everyone in Argentina, and that's going to start with the economy. And he's got a prescription to do it, and that's what he was telling them at Davos. Yes, well, he might be all theatrics to the Western world, but of course he comes from a place of deep concern for his people. And the only reason that Argentina has a president like him is because things have gotten so bad that they need to have some kind of revolution against the type of economics that has crushed their country. Most conservative leaders convert to globalism at the first flute of champagne, but not Malay. I mean, he did a politician's impression of Ricky Gervais' Golden Globe speech, where he effectively told everyone sitting in the room at Davos that they are evil and corrupt. Have a listen to this. Today I'm here to tell you that the Western world is in danger. And it is in danger because those who are supposed to have to defend the values of the West are co-opted by a vision of the world that inexorably leads to socialism and thereby to poverty. Unfortunately, in recent decades, motivated by some well-meaning individuals willing to help others and others motivated by the wish to belong to a privileged caste, the main leaders of the Western world have abandoned the model of freedom for different versions of what we call collectivism. Now, if you don't like reading subtitles, we can always play the creepy version where AI turns Malay into a native English speaker. See this one. Thanks to capitalism, the world is currently in its best moment. There has never been a moment in history with greater prosperity than the one we live in today. Today's world is freer, richer, more peaceful, and more prosperous than ever before. This is true for everyone, but particularly for those countries that are free, where they respect economic freedom and individual property rights. Because free countries are 12 times richer than repressed ones. Saying goes that in countries with freedom, people live better than 90% of population in repressed countries. Now, Nick, you wrote in a recent Spectator article that Malay trashed the rationale for the large bureaucracies entrenched in Western democracies. What do you mean by this? Well, I think we're used to hearing, Alexandra, political leaders uh, use terms such as uh, we want small government, which is, a, which is a great thing. We hear other derivatives of that, such as we want to drain the swamp, we want to inspire the, the uh, private sector, all those sorts of things. But what Millay did was something very interesting. He went right to the heart and, and explained exactly why we don't want large bureaucracies. In a sense, he sort of pulled the rug out of the whole rationale of a lot of the bureaucracy of the size. And he approached it in a very interesting way. He said that there was no such thing as a market failure. So you can imagine you really want your economies with lots of different markets, market for education, health and goods and services and so on. And in a really healthy economy, you have suppliers and you have buyers who consumers and everything works well. But what have a lot of economists and political leaders have done over the years? They said, oh, yeah, that's all fine, but sometimes markets fail. And when markets fail, that's when you need government to come in and to correct those markets. And what Malay said was, no, markets do not fail. And it was a revolutionary idea that he put forward. But when you think about it, 
uh, not only was it clever, but I think he's actually right. And his point was this, that if you have a market in which there is a willing seller and a willing buyer, there's no coercion involved, how can that market fail? How can that market fail? Markets don't fail. And with that very pithy, very short um, bit of analysis, uh, he actually ushered in, I think, a very profound idea and one that uh, we should all think a lot more about because much of our bureaucracy is built upon the idea of market failure. 